Hey everyone, I'm Zach from Workshop Edits and welcome to my shop. And welcome to my three-part series on building the suspended gantry crane system for the camera setup in my shop. Now in this first episode today, we are gonna focus on building the entire roof mounted system. Now it's gonna include the adjustable height mechanism that's actually gonna mount to the top of my garage, as well as the I-beam system that the dolly that will actually mount the camera is going to run along. If you aren't already subscribed to this channel, I would highly recommend that you do that so that you could follow along for this build series as well as see this new camera system set up in action in all of my future projects. So I go into this a lot more in the shop tour that I put out, but I wanted to just give you a little bit more quick context on why I'm doing this project and why I think it's gonna be beneficial for me in my shop space. So my shop is about 19 and a half feet deep by 19 feet wide and you know standard two car garage and when you're making things and you're moving material around the shop and you have lots of tools on wheels a tripod is something that actually gets in the way all of the time and so if i could build something that gets that tripod out of the way for 80 percent of the time then i would happily do it so that's where i came up with the idea to build some sort of system that is a roof mounted where I could slide the camera along it and I can articulate it further out if I wanted to and I could swivel it all around the shop with the uh, intention of getting it off the ground and out of the way. Now this idea was influenced by a video build that John Heise did from I Build It maybe three or four years ago. Now his shop space is a lot different than mine. So what you're gonna see on my build is something that is influenced by that, but quite different. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to his video build uh, playlist so that you can get a sense of what he built and then yeah, stick along for the journey as I build out the modified version of it for my two car garage. The last thing I wanna do before we actually get into the prep and the build part of this first video is show you the space up in the rafters of my garage so you can get a sense of how I designed this and why I designed it the way I did. If you look at the SketchUp models that I'm gonna put up on screen, you'll notice that the I-beam that we're gonna be building in this video is gonna be mounted to two different parts of my ceiling and it's gonna have a system that allows me to make sure that that I-beam is level at all times. Now, I designed it that way for a couple of reasons. The first one is I don't want this thing to be sloped so that the camera dolly part of it slides from left to right or right to left because that's not gonna be very functional for my shop. The other part of it is this is a garage that has a garage door that opens and runs along tracks at a certain height. And so I need this system to be able to raise up and down high enough so that when I'm not using it, it's out of the way and the garage can open fully. But when I'm using it, it can go down low enough so that if I want to open the garage, it will sit mounted to the roof, but below the garage so that the camera dolly system can still fully function. Okay, so for the first part of this project, we're actually not gonna be building anything quite yet. What we need to do first before doing that is actually prep the space where this system is gonna sit permanently. There are some electrical outlets up there. There is my garage door mounted system. There is a giant two by four that spans the garage that really serves no purpose. So I just need to kind of rearrange that and put it in places and remove that two by four so there's nothing in the way and that there's a lot more open space for this thing to sit. All right, so the electrical has been redone, the garage opener has been moved to another place, and the beam up top has been removed. We are now ready to actually begin the project. So what I'm gonna do is take the sheet of plywood that I bought because the entire thing is gonna be built from one sheet of plywood, and I'm gonna begin breaking it down over at the table saw. All right, so we just finished milling everything up on the table saw. All the pieces are cut to their rough length. Now we can actually begin assembly on this, starting with the I-beam portion of the build. Let's do it.
All right, so I just finished building the beam. That is completely finished at this point. Now I am gonna move on to building the pieces that will mount on top of the beam that will connect to the adjustable height supports. I could build these out of the same single sheet of plywood that I got, and technically I already broke down enough material for that, but I do have some extra three quarter inch plywood that I'm gonna use for this specific part of the build. It's not necessary, it's just gonna help me save material on the back end of the project. Let's do it. All right, so these pieces are cut. This isn't really gonna make a difference functionally, but I'm just gonna add a chamfer to these pieces that are gonna mount to the I-beam. I think it's just gonna look a little bit nicer. Okay, we are finished at the router table. The next step is to take these little pieces, which you saw me cut over at the miter saw in a previous step. We're gonna add uh, a hole to them over at the drill press, and then we can mount these to the tops of those pieces that we just routed. Then we can connect those together and connect it to the beam. That's gonna allow us to then mount the roof mounted pieces to the beam and allow us to adjust the height and raise it up and down and level it. Let's do it. Okay, so we just finished building the mounts. Those are ready to go. I'm not going to attach them yet to the top of the beam. I wanna wait until I get the beam in its final lateral position. That's then gonna allow me to mount those in the proper place and just get it nice and perpendicular to the roof and precise. So the next step then is to build the actual adjustable height pieces that are going to mount to the roof. Now I already ripped down those strips over at the table saw, so the next step is to break them down into their proper length at the miter saw, and then we're gonna head over to the router table to route out grooves that's going to allow us to actually slide these up and down. Okay, so just finished breaking everything down over at the miter saw. One of the elements of the design that I put together is that wherever possible, I wanted all of my end pieces to have a nice rounded semicircle. I thought aesthetically it would look nicer and it would be a little bit safer on my hands. Plywood can get kind of sharp when you're cutting lots of 90 degree angles. So I figured if my hands are gonna be reaching forward a lot or this thing is gonna be moving around and swinging, I just wanted to have nice rounded corners. So what I'm gonna do is use my protractor, I'm gonna draw that semicircle, and then I'm gonna head over to the big disc sander and sand that material away. Okay, so everything is now sanded down to its final radius. So the next thing that we need to do in order to make this a system that can slide up and down is I need to route out half inch grooves in the pieces that are gonna slide up and down. And I'm gonna do that over at the router table. Let me show you how. What I did was put a half inch straight bit in my router and then I raised up the bit from the underside just slightly over half the height of the piece of plywood. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna set up the fence so that when I run the piece along here, it's gonna cut a groove directly down the middle of the piece. Then what I can do is flip it over run the same groove and it's going to give me a channel then that's cut in between this piece that's going to allow screws to slide up and down it. All right, so those are all routed out. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it would have been. What I ended up doing instead of routing one side and flipping it over and routing the other side to avoid having things be slightly uneven in case the router bit wasn't completely center, all I did was just route the first four grooves then raise the bit up another half inch or so and then route them out again and that worked out perfect. So the last thing we need to do and then these pieces are actually all gonna be ready to combine and hang up is add a couple of holes so that all of the carriage bolts can pass through. So we're gonna do that over at the drill press. Okay, so here are all the pieces that are gonna go into making these adjustable roof mounts. Now we have two of these longer pieces that have the groove routed into it. So I'm gonna put one down like I have right here. And then I have this shorter piece that has just a single hole cut into it. I'm gonna put that in between and then I'm gonna drop this other piece in place. Now the system works with one carriage bolt that will hold these two pieces together. And those are actually gonna to connect to the pieces that connect to the I-beam that we built earlier. More on that in a second. Then what I'm gonna do is take another four inch, 3 16th inch carriage bolt a washer 
and I'm going to pass it through on this side. And by having the washer in front of the carriage bolt, it's gonna help protect the wood. I'm gonna take another large washer. Then I have these star knobs that I got from Amazon. They also have a 3 16th inch thread, so that's why I bought the 3 16th inch carriage bolts. And I can just drop it on here and twist it all the way down. And before I tighten it all the way, you can see that if I want, and when this thing is hanging vertically, I'll be able to slide it in and out like this. The washer is going to protect the wood and the star knob is going to allow me to adjust it and tighten it with ease. With these pieces in place, what I'm going to do now is just kind of lay things out on top of the I-beam so that I can get a sense of exactly where everything is going to go. Then I'm going to just begin assembling this whole thing and get this thing mounted before the end of the day. Okay, so off camera, I obviously moved the beam into place. And then what I did was I lined up these two mounts that are gonna to attach to the top of the beam with the outsides or kind of the furthest that I would feel comfortable having these pieces mounted to. And that way I know that these are in the perfect place to hang directly below and that this beam will be roughly centered in the shop. So what I'm also gonna do is just take my tape measure if I can find it and just see how far off the wall I am. Six feet on that side five foot six on that side. So I can actually go about three inches in, a little bit too far there. And that is gonna mean that the beam is now roughly centered in my shop, which it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I had these pieces lined up, so I'm just gonna move them over a couple of inches. I'm gonna move this one over a couple of inches. Then I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to mark all four sides so that I know where they need to go. And then I'm gonna make sure that they're centered and then I'm going to add some screws and attach it to this piece. Okay, now that we have our two hinges in place that are mounted to the top of the beam, what we can do is now mount our two adjustable height pieces and then we can actually get this thing up in the air and mount it to the roof and we can adjust it and just check it out and make sure that it's all good to go. All right, everything is assembled. I think this thing is ready to be mounted to the ceiling. Okay, it is hung up now, finally. That got way too complicated for me to try to film and be 13 feet up in the air and trying to drill and also make sure that you guys could see what I was doing. So let me just give you a little bit of a walkthrough of what has been done so far. I'm just gonna take you up a little bit higher so you could see exactly how this thing is mounted. So right here, you could see that is the star knob that I walked through earlier and you can see how it is holding the three pieces together. And there is another one on this side. And then if we look all the way up, you could see that it's mounted to the rafter itself. I actually ended up um, nixing the idea of it being mounted from the additional two by fours that I put up there earlier. I didn't end up needing them for some reason. I thought I did, but since I don't, I can go ahead and take those down and use those two by fours for something else. So what I'm doing real quick is just testing to make sure that when the beam is raised all the way up to its max height, then I can still open my garage door. I think I measured it perfectly. That is perfect. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this particular episode in the series. If you are watching these videos in the future, what I'm gonna do is leave a link to parts two and part three of the build series. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you would hit that button. That way you can stick along for the rest of this build series, as well as check out all of the future projects that use this new system in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> I know. Hi. 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 Hi.